Good morning, students. Welcome to the statistics class once again. And uh, today I'm going to take another problem for TRT test. A uh, reason I'm doing all this is just because this, these problems are the most important problem students. So I have taken one very simple problem, uh, which is all about Fisher's index number, whether it satisfies TRT or no, we have to check. So the problem is on the screen. You can see, verify whether Fisher's index number satisfies TRT. And the data is all about commodity, base year, current year, price and expenditure, price and expenditure, right? Expenditure, what do you mean by expenditure, right? If you have to explain this to me, what do you mean by this expenditure? What the other name for expenditure is value, okay? Both mean the same, that is price into quantity, is it right? So in other words, it is P into Q, you remember this? Okay, so now uh, with this, uh, we have to start and identify what's that we have base year price. This is this is P naught base year expenditure. This is P naught Q naught current year price. This is P one current year expenditure. It is P one Q one. So what are we supposed to find out students? We are supposed to find out right uh, two important terms that is Q naught Q1, we have to find out students, okay? So that is what is important for us. That is Q0, we have to find out, and Q1, we have to find out. So Q0, how to find out Q0? That is P0, Q0 divided by P0. That is 16 divided by 4 is 4. 24 divided by 6 is 4. Then 40 divided by 8 is 5, okay? Then Q1 divided by, uh, sorry, expenditure of the current year divided by uh, price of the current year that is 12 divided by 6 is 2 okay 32 divided by 4 is 8 then 30 divided by 10 is 3 so we got these values p naught q1 so now what are the things that we need to find out we need to find out p1 q0 okay and we need to find out p0 q1 these four two terms we need to find out p1 q0 what is p1 p1 is 6 q0 is 4 6 4 are 24 then uh, 4 into 4 it is 16 okay then 10 into 5 it is 50 okay so when we add this we get here as 10 1 okay so it would be 90 so this is summation p1 q naught students is it right 90 okay yes p naught q1 next is p naught q1 p naught q1 is what p naught is 4 Q1 is 2, 4 2 is 8. Okay, next is 6 into 8. Is how much? 6 into 8 uh, is 48. Correct? It's 6 of 48. Then 8 into 3, it is 24. So when we add this, 16 plus 4 is 22. Uh, in other words, this is 80. So this is summation P naught Q1. So when we add this P1 Q1, we get as 4, okay, 6, 7, 74. And here this would be 10, 1, carry forward. That is uh, 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 4, 80. This is also 80. So what is this, students? This is summation P naught Q naught. What is this, students? Right, summation P1 Q1. Is that clear? So we have uh, these four values right now for us. So now what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to uh, put that in the Fisher's index formula and then test whether it satisfies TRT or no. Okay, a very simple problem which may be there for five marks. So I want you all to go through this and learn completely. Okay, so now what is that Fisher's index number? Uh, what exactly is TRT requires? TRT requires, this is what we need to write it first. TRT requires that, okay, that P01 into P10 should be equal to 1. This is most important students for us to write, okay, P01 into P10 is equal to 1. Is that clear? Okay, 
So now on that basis, let's start with the Fisher's index number. What is that Fisher's index number? Okay, Fisher's index number. I'll write it. Then afterwards, we'll start with the, the formula. What is that? P01. P01. What is that formula for P01? It is summation P1 Q0 divided by summation P0 Q0 into summation P1 Q1 divided by summation P0 Q1. So this right whole thing is in the bracket into 100. We do it. Okay. But for testing, we are not supposed to uh, use into 100. So this is P01. And what would be P10? P10 is something like this. Okay. Uh, it is summation wherever uh, you know one is there we have to put 0 p0 q1 divided by summation p1 q1 into summation p0 q0 divided by summation p1 q0 is that right i hope it is clear to you students so now let's uh, substitute those values students what are the values that we have it then it will be easy for us to understand so what is this okay um, okay summation p1 q0 what is summation p1 q0 it is 90 p0 q0 it is how much 80 p1 q1 it is how much 74 and that one is how much 80 is that right okay the same thing uh, it would be here p10 p10 is equal to this is i'll write it here p01 is equal to summation p0 q0 1 is how much it is 80 divided by p1 q1 is how much it is 74 into p0 q0 is how much it is 80 and P1 Q0 is how much it is 90. Okay. So on that basis, students, let's see if we take the product, we will be getting that as or no, that is uh, P01 into P10. We'll be getting all that uh, is required or no, we'll see. Okay. I'll put everything under one root, students. Is it right? Will that be okay? That it is 90 divided by 80 into 74 divided by 80 okay is that clear into 80 divided by 74 into 80 divided by 90 okay so is that real clear okay now anything gets cancels yes all terms gets cancels 74 74 gets cancels 80 80 gets cancels 90 90 gets cancels and uh, 80 here 80 here also gets cancels so what will be left out here is only root 1 and root 1 is equal to 1 so hence we can say very clearly that fisher's index number Fisher's index number satisfies satisfies T R T. Is that clear, students? Okay. So now keep that in your mind, students. That Fisher's index number, right, is the one which we have it as an ideal index number. So when we say it's an ideal index number, keep it in your mind that number one, okay, the one of the reason that Fisher's index number is called ideal index number is, I'll write it here, Fisher's index number is ideal index number. Why? There are three reasons number one is it satisfies it satisfies trt 
and FRT. Okay, number one. Number two, it takes into consideration, it takes into consideration, consideration that both, okay, both, what both? Both. Base year, base year, and current year quantities as weights, as weights. And one more thing is, one more simple reason is, it takes or it uses students, it uses uh, uh, you know, uh, it takes into consideration, I can say it takes into consideration or we can say that it uses geometric mean as the average. And you know, for averaging ratios, for averaging ratios like this, geometric mean is the best since these three things are there students i say that fisher's index number is an ideal index number okay so with this students we have uh, finished with all these uh, uh, weighted aggregative index numbers and only one concept is left in this chapter which is called as consumer price index number or the cost of living index number which I will be dealing with in the next period. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.